Hello and welcome to another DGCAD Revit Building 8 A to Z uh, training tutorial here, um, part two, and I believe we're on lesson number 13, which is text and dimensions. So we'll just scroll down here. So text and dimensions are kind of fun. They're not really that difficult. Text is very straightforward. Um, you just have to kind of look at the uh, options that you have as, for instance, here is when you start text. You pick the text type that you want and then you can change properties and you can go into here and you can say new and then change the font and the the uh, line or the um, the boldness and the properties of the text and save that as a different text type. Okay, and then you can justify it here and you can add um, leaders to it either while you place it or after you place the text itself. So text goes in pretty straightforward. We have our different sizes. Um, it also uh, controls, consults with the view scale. So when you change the scale of your drawing, this is the actual printed size that you have here and then the, it will adjust itself accordingly uh, when you click the scale on the bottom of the drawing. Um, they are family types and they have they have sizes you put your font and the leader type and the height and all that text background also has um, opaqueness or transparency so you can add that into the text so that things behind it get blocked out or don't get blocked out and then you can also um, s define what type of leader that type of text gets all inside of the properties inside of here so let's get started with that uh, text part of it and we'll just uh, have a look at our Revit inside of here. So I'm just in a drawing here that comes with uh, Revit Urban House and I've just actually added some a rounded uh, wall there on the um, on that corner there. So as we're just adding text in we go down here we click on our text command. When we click on our text we can select what type of text we want. In this case there's only one size available, one type and so I'm gonna click on here and I'm gonna go in and do the same thing we've been doing all the way along and I'm gonna say duplicate because I don't want to change this one and I'm gonna call it um, you know uh, an eighth of an inch for instance Arial. I can pick a color in there for that particular text uh, type I can pick a line weight Okay, line weights I'll sub out in a in a minute and I'll show you where these are set but you can pick line weights in there as well and then you can say whether it's opaque with the background or whether it's transparent um, you can say what type of leader goes with that text okay you can we can also define new leaders okay and then the text itself here's the font here's the height I need to change that to be one eighth of an inch and then the um, tab size width factor inside of here so really straightforward properties of the text and then I just hit OK and now I have that new type of text available so now when I start my text command I can click there and text just has a window oh not a very big window click there and then I can just start adding text in there I'm not going to worry about what I'm typing very quickly just to give it in there and then after you you hit enter um, or let's do that again because we want to see the process it's a bit different you click in here and then you put your text in and then you click out to stop it and then you can place more text put more text in and then click out once click out and then click again and then escaping twice gets you completely out of it and then after that you can take your text you can work on your wrap and you can scale this or uh, sorry rotate this and then you can move it around and of course you can nudge using your arrow keys so text goes in basic straightforward stuff and then you can use your um, if you put some other text in and maybe we'll go use that other type over here put some text in there click out hit escape I can uh, go up to here and pick this and then grab this text and then switch that over to that with our painter right just gonna delete these so you can use your uh, painter to paint types from type to type regardless of whether it's text remember even if it's a wall or a door or a window we can use that to uh, match the type from one to the next um, 
So what else do we have with our text? We can go in here. We can say how we want it justified over here. We can add by default there's no leaders but you can go back any point you want later and click on a piece of text and say okay give me a leader and it'll add the leader and you click out then you can grab this and go move this over start to do what you want with that okay then you can say what type of leader this is by going inside of here edit for instance and say arrowhead type you know 30 degree and we can say no we want a diagonal or a different leader type on that hit OK <clears throat> and OK on that so I don't want to use the uh, diagonal eighth but I'm gonna go back to the 30 degree one here and I'm just gonna um, come on back out and hit on that now click on there now the other thing is that I should have mentioned to begin with of course is settings under settings annotations okay arrowheads inside of here this is where you globally control what type of this is an arrow 30 degree in this particular case and if I said filled it would show up it's gonna show up filled back here because this is then used as more or less a sub style later on in this uh, as a property or used as a as an arrowhead on this leader line back in over here so I can also change the degree of that and I can change the size of it as well so that you can see the arrow style then there's the different um, tick marks heavy tick mark and so those are the different arrow styles that are available and this is how it's gonna look so I hit apply and hit OK and come out and then I've got my arrowhead which is what I wanted on there so af as you put text in you can move this around and you can later go click on the text and then you can say add a leader in over here and then you can go move that leader around if you don't want the leader anymore, you just bring it back to um, bring everything back to there. In fact, and uh, we need to remove a leader. So here we ha we say remove a leader, and it just gets rid of that leader, and it will work its way back to the first leader that um, was placed in there. We can again change the justification after that. We can hit remove a leader again again adding these ones in different types of leaders that you wanna add in there at any time then you can take that text and you can move it and the leader will be dynamic as you move it around um, it'll pick it up and it'll go where it should uh, as far as from the text so that's kind of a nice feature to have as well we grab that piece of text for instance and then go and place it over top of this object you can see that it masks out what's behind it and that's the transparency effect and we can go into here now and we can say okay um, we're gonna edit that particular type and we're gonna say no don't make it opaque make it transparent okay here we go you see when you put text on this particular when you add a leader to this piece of text this type of text this is the arrow style it uses and that's the one that I changed earlier so you can see how that works its way around when you add a leader you are telling that text what type of leader to actually use right inside of here which is really nice too so then you can have text that looks very much the same but uses two or three different types of leaders so I can click on there And that's all good and then I can come out and now you can see through the text okay let's have a quick look at our notes here so uh, text add and remove uh, leaders here's our properties we can create our own text um, it's a family type and then we can um, cut and paste those from drawing to drawing we have all that text background annotation settings okay under settings annotations we want to have a look at that and that goes for even the next part as well we go into settings annotations okay dimensions linear dimensions how they're going to behave angular radial dimensions we can go into here we can say okay this is the type of tick mark to use okay and this is the line weight all that stuff um, and you can change that again to go back to that 30 degree arrowhead or whatever you want we have made those already uh, earlier and then we can say the line weight of the tick of the line itself and the tick mark and the dimension line extension all these you know witness line uh, 
properties offsets and gaps and color and all that so that's just regular straightforward properties of a dimension style and then it's given a name in here and we could again duplicate it because it goes down it says what type of text to use with this dimension style again duplicate give it a new name change the properties to whatever you want inside of here um, and then hit OK so settings annotations dimensions linear you go in here you set up your properties you save them and then you apply those later when you go to do a dimension we go down here to our dimension command doesn't matter where we go we can start by dimensioning maybe just these three windows by hovering over there and then placing out click and then if we hit our equal button okay it will equally space those now I can also lock that now it it leaves you in dimension mode so you can go and add new dimension so I'm gonna say okay I don't want the center line I'm gonna use my tab button and tab to get to get over to that face and then tab once I get to there click and place okay if I want to add a dimension line in after the fact I can click on it and I can say edit witness lines and all I have to do is pick a point there pick a point here and then pick nothing click nothing okay and then you always get this option in this case I don't want to do it but you can also go in and lock these dimensions like this and hit escape and you're done okay so dimensions form constraints so that means I cannot take this window and move it okay I'm trying to move it there and it's not moving so I can go back at a later time and click on here and unlock that dimension take it and then move it over a little bit oh now this one's trying to stay locked you see so I would have to have the opportunity to remove the constraints and maybe I will take that move it over a little bit go back now click on it and then put the locks back on like that click out okay this one I did the equal spacing let's just get rid of that and unconstraint you see it that once you remove the dimension it tells you that you know things aren't constrained so I'm just gonna move that down a little bit do that one again dimension from here and as you hover over you can always use your tab button to pick different points and then you can go in again here equal bank and it'll take the the overall space and center the the middle one okay we could equalize those for instance and then lock them okay then we could put a, another dimension in for instance you know over here and not lock that dimension and then if we take this window and we move it these ones will stay together and this one will always be flexible okay so we would maybe keep that one apart lots of creative ways you can get in and do your dimensions of course the size of your text and the size of your dimensions all depends on what scale you're at if I go to a different scale one eighth of an inch okay it always does a zoom extents but you'll notice that the text and the fonts and everything has gotten larger now okay the same as your annotation bubbles and all of that stuff so we can click on there we can also tell that dimension style let's go into there and hit edit we can go in for instance and say center line symbol right here oh and there isn't one loaded unfortunately I have to go get one um, and we can look at the other properties of the uh, of the dimension that dimension style inside of here okay um, and then from there we can go in and we can just try putting in a few more dimensions here now when you put in your dimensions you've got linear dimensions you've got the dimension types over here again going in here edit duplicate make your changes okay that's a dimension style or we can dimension angular dimensions for instance maybe we'll even do um, do the angular from here oh start that again from maybe here one more time please thank you put that dimension in there and then we might do another one from here to here and bring that out to there you can also dimension 
back to here and we can say the chord length of an arc. So we can pick that surface of that wall right there and then it wants to know the intersecting points and then we can actually dimension the length of that chord and then when you click out you get nothing. So that's a really nice feature to be able to do that with your dimensioning. So angular dimension, very straightforward. Pick always tabbing between your points, okay? Pick and then tab and then place and then after that it's just a matter of a grip and then locking that in place. Okay. You can click on here and you can pull these points back and forth if you want. Okay. If we want to add new witness lines in, okay. Let's uh maybe even add another window in here. Let's do a right click and say create similar. Put another one in. Maybe I want to add that object and we'll just move this out of the way a little bit um, and I'm gonna click on here I'm gonna say edit witness lines and now I can just go adding points in it's just that easy and then when you're done you click nowhere and then it gives you your options to go in and change these uh, options over here and then escape gets you out okay um, going back in here again if you don't like the surface that got dimensioned on you can see there's grips I'm gonna click on here and I watch what happens I'm gonna click here oh there's no okay here you can see it's moving to the different dimensionable spaces of those objects let's go back maybe to a wall here and let's go to high medium detail and see if there's anything in the wall so there's not much there but if I click on here I can go like this just by clicking this grip okay and do that or I can actually grab that and just drag it okay isn't that wonderful so now let's go we want to add a dimension we go edit witness line right to the center of there done we can go add another one in somewhere else or we can click on this and we can take this and say no you are there and then now I can edit a witness line and I can add another one in over here the whole time of course no I hit escape on that when you move the objects all your dimensions are going to update so clicking on the dimension edit a witness line click on here escape oh I keep escaping on that notice when you go to dimension we're looking up here now at the core center of core by default when I go and do a dimension it the first place it's going to instinctively go is the center line I'm going to change this and say no uh, wall face core let's go yes so then now no matter it's always going to grab the outside face of the wall instead of and all I'm doing is I'm clicking points clicking points clicking points clicking and then out to where you want it to go and don't click anything just click there and then go ahead with your locking or adding your constraints on with that so when you add dimensions in you can actually control your your whole drawing by going in and adding a dimension on to here from here to here and and then click and lock it of course then what happens is if you know if you move this if this wall here gets moved over by a certain distance for some reason uh, what's it saying constraints are not satisfied uh, so it must be constrained in another way remove it's asking me it's telling me to remove the constraint so must be some for some uh, this is probably vertically locked um, onto something else so it's not letting me do that but if I drew my own walls maybe uh, and did that same thing then you would see that the dimension starts to drive the model so that wasn't necessarily a good example on that particular drawing um, now let's just have a quick look at our notes okay so back here to, uh, we've got uh, dimensions are easy uh, as I've noted uh, click nothing to stop placing points so you click in a blank space relocate witness lines by grabbing that middle grip using your tab key of course note the grips on there for sliding your dimensions back and forth note your dimension properties and your dimension types and the tick marks and all that stuff and properties use your locking constraints okay you can edit your witness lines add and remove witness lines okay and I don't know if we did a remove on that click on here and all you have to do to uh, remove a witness line is to drag that witness line to another line and it's gone okay so removing witness lines dragging from one point to a next oh in that case it's because it's with a door 
it's not I don't think it's gonna let me do do the oh there it will so dragging it over or edit meaning basically adding so edit witness lines adds them in and I keep hitting escape on that or you can grab the dimension itself and then grab this and then move it over to here okay so over here we've got uh, editing adding and removing lines preferred surface we saw up at the top do you want the center or, or the core to dimension to use your tab button make equal distances by hitting the equal button and locking and get creative with that activate dimensions when you select more than one object so let's try that inside of here we can go in let's say for instance let's just get rid of these dimensions over here it's going to remove the constraints that's okay I don't mind now the windows will because the dimensions were constraining them uh, it was an integral part of the positioning so that it's telling me that now if you you move one aside the others are not going to move with it so if I go into uh, and I just baby uh, maybe grab a couple of objects I can hit activate dimensions once I have that then I can grab these and I can move this over and I can look at distances to uh, oh in this case it's only giving me one on each side um, for those objects so you can activate the witness lines and then you can go in and you can actually change these numbers to be you know seven feet at any time when you see a dimension like that interesting how that worked okay I grabbed all four of them and it positioned them like that and then I can go inside of here and I can take this number and change this to be four feet and it'll move all of them four feet and then I can just click out so those are temporary dimensions now whenever you click on anything it'll it'll give you a temporary dimension if you click this line it'll turn that into a real dimension okay let's go up here do another dimension over here let's just grab this wall and click on it activate dimensions it'll put a dimension on there all I have to do is click on there and I get my dimension and then I can maybe drag that over to there as I please Okay, grab this, take this, move it over to there. Okay, so click, I'm going to delete that. Again, when you select an object, it's going to give you the opportunity. If it doesn't show you the dimensions right away, sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. If you click on there, it'll show you dimensions. If it doesn't show you dimensions, you click activate dimensions, and then it'll put some numbers in there. And depending on which way you go, it'll constrain it to the nearest objects and then hitting this button on any temporary dimension will turn it into a real dimension okay that's that is a temporary dimension in the sense of it's just giving us distances okay not the same as you click on an object and you get activate dimension so turning temporary dimensions whenever you see a temporary dimension you have the opportunity to click on it and make it a permanent dimension okay activate dimensions when you select more than one object or if the object does not show you temporary dimensions uh, make temporary dimensions permanent we just talked about and changing the units format is interesting about um, with uh, Revit because I can go in and uh, click on this particular um, dimension style and go into here and click in edit and I can actually go down to the units format and not use the project settings and then instead of saying feet and inches I can change right here to be uh, metric millimeters and hit OK and OK and my dimensions uh, will all update to be metric right there on the spot for me okay so you can have two different dimension styles look at that okay that one is metric and one is imperial I can go in here now I can click on this think of it go into here and then I can go edit duplicate make a new one and that new one is the same except for it uses feet and inches hit OK hit apply hit OK hit OK and that one's so then I've actually got I can go do a dimension now and I can pick from either one of these I can pick this one this one will give me a metric dimension right there that will read my scale properly and then if I go and do a dimension I can go in and I can switch to be imperial do the very same dimension right in there okay and then the precision of that will be inside of your units when you go into here 
we can say to the nearest half inch to the nearest 64th of an inch however you go you can do that so it might break that down a little bit as well globally you'll notice I said override the project settings because by default under settings um, under annotations sorry under settings under project units right here okay normally it goes by this this is how your linear length works okay and your areas and volumes and angles so and then you've got that and of course you've got your precision and everything suppress zero feet if you want that on so it doesn't say zero feet five inches which most of us want um, so we have that so globally your project settings are here or you can define it defy it with one of your different styles uh, within the dimension style